Welcome to our first segment on the eTutor Development Project. Uh, in this session, we have the privilege of having uh, Prof. Mashire. Thank you for joining us. I know you're busy in your hectic work schedule, but we really appreciate the time. And we have Prof. Maturana as well. Thanks for joining us today and sharing some or unpacking the idea of eTutor Development with you're us. You're welcome. Uh, so thanks, colleagues. Colleagues, there's a lot of uh, confusion in the university and the importance of the eTutor Development. I thought maybe we can start, Prof, by unpacking, and I know this is you, the architect of it. What is the integrated tutor model? Look, it's, a, it's our uh, system of student support. The, the idea is to uh, have students who could be anywhere else in the world, having someone that they can talk to, they can interact with. If they've got issues, they can ask, but uh, all things that have to do with the academic world. So. Uh, if, if we don't have people who can help uh, students to remain engaged in their, in the, in their studies, students become lonely and, and students may often feel like dropping out. And we don't want that. We want every one of our students to come in and to succeed in the courses that they have taken. So the integrated tutor model is a system where we've combined uh, elements of face-to-face -face tutoring that happens at the different regions. Mm -hmm. uh, and for those students who are not able to get uh, closer to any of our regional centers, then they can uh, engage and interact with our e-tutors right. and on an, on, on an online platform, uh, MyUNISA. Okay. So that whole process where the two elements speak to each other and it speaks to uh, how uh, lecturers also uh, use each with us right. to support teaching and learning. That process we call the integrated tutor model. So it's, it's, it's very much an embedded process that closes the gap between the, the student and the university. Yeah, yes, uh, because, because we, we normally talk of uh, the transactional distance right. between a student who is far away from the institution and the institution um, and also it provides students with an opportunity to interact with each other. Yeah. We, we all know the value of, of, of peer learning. Mm. Uh, we know that uh, sometimes students uh, amongst themselves are better able to explain certain concepts mm. to each other than sometimes maybe the lecturers. Mm. And so, so, so that provides that space right. to help yeah. uh, that kind of interaction and support for our students. Oh, that sounds mm. perfect. Prof, then, I mean, coming from that definition, what is the role of the e-tutor in UNISA's environment? Um, we, we see the role of an e-tutor being that of facilitating students' learning. Mm -hmm. So they enhance the students' learning experience mm -hmm. by actually getting students to uh, participate and engage in the uh, content of the study material. Right. And, and we see four basic roles for our e-tutors. And, and we've, we've sort of adopted that from Collins and Becher's model of okay. the e-tutor role. They do, the, the, the one part is the administrative role. Right. The other part is the um, um, academic role. The other one is that of managerial, yes. and then there's also the technical role right, right. that they perform. Now, right. if I were to distinguish between those different roles, the main one is the, is the academic role of mm. facilitating the real content, the cognitive aspect of the content. Right. And then the second one is that of creating a, a social learning online environment. Yes. So they need to sort of things like open up discussions on the online platform, make students feel comfortable mm -hmm. to engage on the online platform, get students with different uh, learning styles to be able to be accommodated in that online learning space. And, and, and they also have to, the managerial role, they also have to try and pace the, 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 the discussion, the pace of the discussion online. Make sure that they complete all the objectives that the uh, lecturers have set for the students yeah. and, and for themselves and be able to sort of um, bring in all the different types of students to come into the platform right. and, and, and study. Make sure that the learning objectives are completed within the timelines yeah. that are set by the academics. Mm -hmm. And then the technical role will be the role where if students are battling to, for instance, upload a uh, 
assignments on the MyUNISA platform, mm -hmm. then they will come in and support them. If students have a, a challenge with a certain technical aspects yeah. of the platform, they would be able to support so, them. Right, right. Mm. Yes. So, so. And, and the, there might be in some, some of the courses, there might be specific software that are used in a, in a, in a course, uh, and so the, the, the students might not know the how about of doing yeah. it, and so your e-tutor will come in there uh, so that the students can ask you know, technical questions in terms of uh, that particular software <laughs> that is maybe unique for that particular yeah. course. Yeah. So it's, it's not just a teaching role, I mean it's, it's a much more broader role. Uh, it's, it's actually the, uh, I mean if I have to think of the e-tutor role now from what we're discussing, uh, it's critical to have that e-tutor in that space because if you have a lecture with 20,000 students in a class, it's impossible to have that, that one lecture deal with 20,000 students. It is, it, is, it is not possible and, 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 and so that is why the, the role of an e-tutor becomes so critical in the, yeah. in the, in the, in the whole uh, design of the, of, of the courses because then um, uh, students are, are sort of like ring fenced, they know that they've got uh, certain peers that they could know, that could interact with, right. uh, even on a first name basis, yes. they, they could know their things, they could uh, check uh, that, oh, okay, if I need this particular kind of, of, of question, I can address it to, yeah. to so and so. Uh, it, it creates just an environment that is a little bit more warm, mm -hmm. that is a little bit more caring, yeah. and, and, and that, is, that is very supportive. Mm -hmm. So, so and, and that's, that's what we, uh, we, we want to do, because uh, our, 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 our premise is that uh, we must move from uh, what we call a pedagogy of care, so that mm -hmm. uh, our students feel a sense of belonging to right. the institution yeah. and right. they are not feeling that they are left alone or yeah. they are not being cared for or no one is interested yeah. in them, yes. I, I think that touches very much on the whole idea of the Africanization of our institution because it touches on the notion of Ubuntu, mm -hmm. that we're a community, we're not left yeah. alone. Mm -hmm. uh, but C can I maybe just add a bit on, on the issue mm -hmm. about the, the importance of the e-tutor? Yeah. or the face-to-face -face tutor within our context. Yeah. Remember, as an ODEL institution, one of the things that we are primarily tasked with is to open up access. Right. And we've got huge numbers yeah. of students. There are modules where you will find there are about, what, 6,000 students registered for. Yeah. And the lecturer on, on, on her or his own would not be able to manage that very large numbers. Exactly. And in the design of the integrated tutor model, we are looking at smaller groups of students right. being linked to an e-tutor, for instance. An e-tutor is supposed to have a small group of 40 students okay. in one group. And we give a maximum of about five groups. Right. So which means it's about 100 students uh, per, 200 students Change per, per e-tutor. Yeah. And, and the idea, if you look at the literature on distance education, they talk about sometimes when we look at massive numbers, mm. access, when we open access, there's always the issue of around quality right. and being able to really, you know, look at the students and focus our attention on the students. So when we bring in the integrated tutor model, we're saying, Let's also not compromise quality right. when we try and open up access. Exactly. So when we focus on smaller groups, then it becomes much more easier for the tutor to yeah, engage exactly. and provide quality support exactly. to our students. Exactly. Yes. And I think touching on that, that notion of quality, uh, what type of skills, I mean, we, if we want a quality tutor in the system to benefit and to achieve what we just said, mm -hmm. what type of skills would a tutor need? Look, firstly, uh, particularly each of us would need to be people who have um, a, a, an orientation towards using a newer technology right. to support students. They should be able to have uh, skills of uh, interacting with our students um, uh, with due regard in terms of uh, respect for, 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 the, for, the, for the student on the, on the other side. Mm -hmm and to have that notion that uh, they, they are there to help facilitate learning. So, right. so, so, so one of the key things that uh, we will be looking for is, is, is a person who will develop a, a repertoire of skills in terms of facilitation of learning, knowing how to 
to, to engage students, knowing how to ask questions, knowing how to um, elicit uh, responses from students, because yeah. it is through, through the, the process of uh, students thinking about what they are learning, right, right. Um, uh, that metacognitive skill mm -hmm. uh, is so, so important that as they do that, as they think about what they are learning, as, as they question uh, their assumptions, etc., etc., that deep learning uh, mm -hmm. happens. Uh, and, and once students are able to undergo that deep learning sense, then they learn more out of the subjects. Mm -hmm. Then it is, it's not just a thing that they uh, memorize for examination yeah. and it's lost. So, so it's embedding those uh, high skills that mm -hmm. will benefit them uh, out there uh, when, when they are now uh, uh, graduates of the, of the institution. So, so an HOTA and HOTA must be able uh, to have at least some kind of knowledge about uh, learning theories right. so that they can understand how individual students learn. Mm. And with that knowledge, then they'll be able to utilize those skills, those pedagogic knowledge within uh, the interaction. So, mm. so, so, so an e tutor and a face-to-face -face tutor must be willing to learn those kinds of things. And, and, and we don't assume that that will come naturally to yeah. individuals. Yeah. That is why we will have a, these kinds of courses where we, we expose um, our, our, our tutors to, to the various uh, learning theories, to, to how facilitation of learning happens, uh, and then uh, to, to enable them to, to mm -hmm. be free and to be open to experiment and to engage with students. Mm -hmm. Different cohorts of students will come with their different needs and their yeah. different styles. Mm -hmm. So an, a tutor should be able to adapt to the kind of students that they interact with and be responsive to the needs of that particular uh, group. So those are some of the things that we, that we would really like to see happening. Yeah. It also boosts to lifelong learning, I mean, it, the kind of principles that you create. I think mm -hmm. one of the other key things is for them to be able to understand that tutoring is not teaching, yeah. to make a distinction between those two and understand that within the, the, the environment that we live in, the, the, the information age that we live in, mm -hmm. they need to be competent with, with, with as Prof said, issues of uh, the type of technologies right. that are relevant and appropriate for their context. And I think most importantly, we, we, they need to understand the theories of learning around the fact that they don't need to be teaching, a, a, you know, expecting students to, to regurgitate information yes. that they give yeah. them, but they need to be more than anything expert questioners. Right. They need to be able to know how to ask the right questions yes. to elicit the right thinking and, 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 and cause students to think about their responses mm. before they respond. Mm. So in that way, they would be able to, 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 to get more in touch with what they're supposed to learn. Exactly. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a critical role, role of, of facilitating the learning process. Yes, yes. Yeah. expert questioning. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so you kind of uh, lead the discussion, yes. you've got the content, but you're leading the discussion, the learning mm. that is taking place. So it becomes much more of an engaging exercise yes. as yes. opposed yes. to. Yes. Uh, going back to, to a little earlier, I mean, we've been around the country and we've seen the different provinces and one of the advantages that this, uh, the e-tutor development project has was that we now had a face-to-face -face contact with a lot of the e-tutors and we were able to understand more specifically where they've come from. What were some of the challenges for you, Prof, that you've identified with the e-tutors? Look, uh, the you know, similar thing that happens with our students in a distance education world crept into the area of, of <laughs> HHS so that uh, they also now started uh, feeling lonely. Uh, they uh, felt that um, the, 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 they don't get as much contact as they would have liked with uh, you know, the academic members mm -hmm. of, of staff. Um, and, uh, and also some kind of, they themselves also uh, having a space where they could talk one with each other because in, 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 in one module you could have a number of uh, different uh, tutors mm -hmm. and so they, they, they would also 
uh, would have loved to have a little community amongst themselves where they could uh, discuss issues of common interest, understand what are uh, the issues that come out from uh, other modules, etc., etc. But the, one of the key things was that uh, linkages between the university uh, and, 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 and them, such that uh, if they have uh, technical challenges, issues of you know, payment, issues of uh, connecting with the learning management system and all those kinds of things, that they can get be much better uh, res res right. responses, okay. yes. Prof, your observation? I think from my side, I, I picked up some challenges with the use of technology. Right. They were not all on the same level. Mm -hmm. There were some who were much more advanced, but then w those that were, I understood that they taught themselves how okay. to use the okay. technology, yeah. how to search for the relevant technology. So I found yeah. that some of them were challenged in terms of how do they uh, motivate students to participate mm -hmm. in the online classes? How do they retain that participation in the online class and, right. and how do they deal with those students who do not really readily feel comfortable mm -hmm. to participate in the online platform. Right. So, so, so it was more issues around using different technologies to enhance participation in the online space. Mm -hmm. And then I also found that there were some who were not so clued up uh, in terms of the, the, the types of pedagogies okay. that they mm -hmm. needed to utilize in order to bring out certain objectives yeah. within mm -hmm. the learning space. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's, that's important, is the idea of the, the pedagogical approach mm -hmm. uh, and specifically uh, with, the, with the critical role that the teachers have in the space. Mm -hmm. uh, and <clears throat> I'm excited about the next part, Prof, because the next part is now how we actually design the interventions. And that's the exciting part, is because now we fix up things. Yeah. <laughs> so we're fixing up the system. Yeah. Um, uh, how, how do you see this new training addressing some of those challenges that you've, uh, you've raised? One of the things that we've, we've learned from, from uh, learning theory is that uh, people who are engaged with the learning process yeah. uh, perform much better than people who are not uh, engaged. Right, yeah. and, and, and so uh, the, the exciting thing for me is that we, are, we now have prepared uh, an environment where we can engage with our yes. tutors and our tutors can remain engaged. Yeah. Remember, uh, our tutors are actually part of the um, teaching, we could call it teaching corp yeah. of the institution. Exactly. They, they are an essential part of our delivery model. And yes. so the more they remain engaged, uh, the better. Yes. We've, 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 we've uh, now are preparing uh, a set of engagement uh, activities mm -hmm. that will ensure that our e tutors down the line uh, will be uh, amongst the best yeah. uh, facilitators of learning you can find in the, exactly. in the, in the country. And that actually even uh, hopefully they will be enticed to, <laughs> to become uh, <laughs> academic uh, 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 teachers. Yeah. So, so we've got a, a, a set of uh, activities, a, a, a set of interactions that we are planning mm -hmm. uh, that will equip them. So, yeah. so the idea is that uh, Tutors should be very free with us mm. to tell us where they think that they need help most. Right. And we are there. We've configured ourselves now so that we can be able to respond to those various things. Yeah, yeah. Out of the, um, the discussions that we had with uh, the tutors through the focus groups, mm -hmm. we have received a number of interventions that we uh, have uh, gained from from our tutors that we have lined up, and so yeah, it it it's, it it sounds uh, challenging. It sounds interesting yes. uh, to come them. Uh, we we have uh, introduced a lot of uh, newer technologies right. uh, that are cutting edge. Mm -hmm. Uh, that that use uh, social media to to connect with our e tutors yeah. and that will help uh, even tutors uh, when they interact with the students. So we've got all those things uh, lined up, and mm -hmm. then we've got uh, a, a, a series of uh, good units that we've integrated mm -hmm. uh, in the course that will really, I think, e equip yeah. our our our, yeah. our tutors. And, and I think for me, one of the the nice things about the new course is what you addressed earlier, is the community of practice. Yeah. Is that now we create a yeah. space for each of across the country to basically mm -hmm. come together across mm -hmm. disciplines and, and engage with each other about the learning processes. 
for, for you, I know this is your little baby as well, so <laughs> what, what, uh, how do you see this program? What's interesting for you? What catches your attention? You know, for me, it's, it's, it's being able to get them to see themselves, as, as Prof said earlier, as a community within mm. UNISA, as part of the UNISA community. So for me, it's, it's, it's having them to understand how UNISA functions right. as a basic uh, 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 foundation. Mm. Understanding how UNISA functions, the internal systems within UNISA, but then also the uniqueness of our institution. We, yes. We're not any other type of institution. Exactly. We're yeah. an Odell institution. And there are certain things that are specific to Odell, yes. which, which I think it's, it's, it becomes important for us to expose them to for them to be able to understand what role do they play, mm -hmm. which would be different from, an, from a tutor who functions at a contact exactly. institution. Exactly. So that for me, it, it's something that I see as, 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 as an important aspect that we need to expose them right. to. Right. But then also, I think the whole notion of giving them different pedagogies mm -hmm. within uh, our Odell environment. What is it that they need to understand as theories of teaching? as theories of learning right. within the space, yes. yes. And also they, they will have you uh, <laughs> <laughs> there uh, with, with all your experience in terms of uh, uh, doing uh, online teaching, uh, particularly in the, in the MOOC space. Uh, I mean, the, the, the courses that you've put in uh, are really uh, ex ex exciting. Um, and and they, will, they will give also uh, our, 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 our tutors a sense of uh, what happens in the uh, open learning uh, mm. environment, okay. um, and 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 then when when our university is able to move in terms of uh, other courses uh, into high online learning mm. uh, environments, our tutors will have all the basic training exactly. that they, they would need mm. in that in that environment, and and so not only will these courses provide enough support for our educators to do their work but it will also provide sufficient professional development activities mm. for a tutor themselves as a person right. in order to participate right. in this digital era yeah. uh, of, of, of the fourth industrial, industrial revolution <laughs> just around the corner this will make uh, exactly. life yeah. much 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 easier for for the, for, for the, for the each of us it yeah. also uh, helps uh, in terms of their own being uh, with with regard to uh, self-actualization yes. uh, around the areas of lifelong learning yes. very 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 exactly. critical exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and I like this approach because uh, what we're doing is we're transitioning the institution to a much more advanced space mm -hmm. but we Building a cohort of skilled professional professionals that we can take with us through mm -hmm. this journey. Mm -hmm. So it's not like fixing it up later. We're actually yeah. starting from the foundation. Yeah. Uh, colleagues, last last words uh, for the tutors that are in the system. What are your encouraging words? Inspire them to you know, progress, continue the development. Participation rates in higher education are very low. Mm -hmm. The country is spending a lot of money to train individual because we are a developing country so if we don't have skilled individuals mm. to to help us with the economy to help us with all the development challenges we are we will be really in a dire state so the role that each of us have in helping us as an institution to be able to produce graduates is very critical right. i really do, do not want uh, each of us not to see that part, their role in ensuring that South Africa is on a growing trajectory, is yes. on a trajectory that will ensure that uh, we are a thriving economy. That is important. Right. And they play a central role in exactly. that. And so I, I just trust that uh, our educators will be so excited. Yes. Uh, and, 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 and whatever issues that may arise. I mean, any system will have its you know, f flaws there and there that they need to hang on and realize that their job, their role uh, here will help the greater cause right. uh, for South Africa. Right. Yes. Wise words. <laughs> from your side? I think it's, it's the same, but then more so from the perspective that it's, it's UNISA. Mm. I, I'm hoping that our tutors would 
uh, be excited to be part of an institution that is making huge uh, impact, not only in South Africa, but in the continent and across the world, and be able to contribute, I mean, at, at, at in South Africa only. Apparently, UNISA contributes about 35% mm. of students who are enrolled at higher education. Mm. So, which is, I think it's about 35%. Which is quite a big chunk, right, right. if you look at it. Yeah. And, and the fact that UNISA is able to provide access to those students who would not otherwise have access yeah. into higher education. So I think I'm seeing, I'm hoping that our tutors would feel very proud to be associated with mm -hmm. an institution such as ours, which is making a huge impact across uh, uh, the continent itself. Yeah. And, and, and be able to contribute towards inspiring and motivating our students to participate and see themselves having you know, the, the, the confidence to, yeah. to engage with our study material and ultimately graduate yes. from the institution. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, those are wise words. And thank you for sharing also the, the, the program and the developments with us, the new developments. Uh, and with those wise words, you know, one of the critical things is that the e-tutors are not left alone in the new system. Mm -hmm. They're part and parcel mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for taking the time for being with us today. And hopefully we can continue this conversation again some other time. It's been inspiring. So thank you very, very much.